One of the stupidest things that I've done on this channel was attempt to call an AMD CPU with an Intel stock cooler. And it went both as well as you'd expect it to, but also produced an interesting result. Let me explain. You see, all of the new Zen 3 or Ryzen 5000 CPUs have a thermal limit of 90 degrees C, except for the 5600X, which is the one that we tested in the previous video. That has a thermal limit of 95 C. And even though we exceeded that thermal limit, the CPU never actually clocked itself down to its base frequency of 3.7 gigahertz, which to me was incredibly alive. Alarming. And if you haven't seen that incredibly stressful video, I'm going to have that linked up there. You should probably watch that. But not learning our lesson and investigating this even further, we're going to try it again. We're going to stick an Intel stock cooler on an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X and see if we can reach base frequency or kill an $800 CPU. <laughs> I'm nervous about this video. Okay, so let's quickly recap how this is even possible, how you can get an Intel CPU cooler mounted to an AMD CPU. And that pretty much is solely because of this motherboard. This ASRock X570i Phantom Gaming is one of very few AMD motherboards that uses an Intel mounting solution. This is 11.5x or 1200, the same one that's been used for God knows how long, many, many years. This allows us for better or for worse, definitely for worse, mount an Intel stock cooler to an AMD CPU. And of course, we're taking it to the next level and using a 5950X. So that's how we're going to mount it. But first, we should probably figure out what our control is. If we're going to compare the data against something, what should we compare it to? As we know, the 5950X doesn't actually come with a stock cooler. So we're going to be using the Notchua NHU12S. And this is more than sufficient for cooling a 5950X, which I've shown in many recent videos. And quickly going over that data with you now before we do something very stupid. The Notchua NHU12S managed to keep the 5950X cool at 100% fan speed. Its idle temp was 26.5 degrees C. And then when we put it under load with OCCT, we got an average clock of 4.53 gigahertz, giving us an average temp of 55.2 degrees C. And when it comes to our maximum temp, we got 66.8 C with a minimum clock of 4.49 gigahertz. So this is how our processor should behave. Okay, so we are all set up. We have the 5950X attached to the Intel stock cooler. And I'll tell you what, before we turn it on, I should probably get one more thing. I think we're ready. Cool. All right, what I'm gonna do is set this right here. Faith, faith right there. Okay, so in theory, all that I need to do if anything goes wrong, which hopefully it doesn't, is pull out the pin and slam down on the fire extinguisher. So, shall we turn it on? Nothing's on fire yet. Oh, that's quite a noise. Okay, so as before, we are running at 100% fan speed because let's face it, this Intel stock cooler needs all the help it can get. Okay, so what we're going to do is record in OCCT. The instruction set is set to auto, which I believe is going to be AVX2. We will confirm that once the benchmark runs. And it's going to be using all 32 threads. We're going to pay attention to everything in hardware info on the right. And I guess, let's have a look. So we're idling at the moment. Um, let's have a look at what idle looks like. So three to 5% CPU usage. It is at about four gigahertz, which I mean, it looks like it's boosting pretty okay. And we are sat just below 60, so 43.8, 46.3, with an average being 51, 58. That's pretty high for an idle average. Uh, oh God. Um, <laughs> you ready? I'm ready? I'm not ready, I'm ready, hang on. Go. Okay, so where are we? Let's quickly go over to CCX. So we are currently at 77.8. That's warm. That's not as warm as I thought it would be. I thought it would initially jump straight up to 90C. Bear in mind that 90C is the thermal limit for this CPU. Uh, okay, we're at 83. We are 30 seconds in. 85, 86, 89, 90. We're at thermal limit, at least on one of the CCXs. Okay, so it's gone down, okay, 91. So we're over thermal limit. What is our clock looking like? Okay, so we can actually have a look at the minimums. 4025 is our lowest so far, which is still over 600 megahertz over base clock, which is crazy. Da -da -da. Temperature 90.8 and 88.5 it was at. What? <laughs> How can you be 600 megahertz over? Like, at what point does it hit base? What is going on here? 
Okay, why are you dropping down to 70? 65. Um, what? Clocks. We hit base! <laughs> All right, 3.0, 3.1. Okay, let's have a look at our minimums. Three point. But that was only when I hit this graph. Like what? Overheated. Oh, it's going into overheated. Okay, so we figured out what went wrong. OTCT actually saved our CPU for us because it could detect an overheat and um, it decided to stop the test, which is good. Um, I would very much value that if I'm not doing what I'm doing. So let's find a different benchmark. So, Intel burn test. Whew, I'm getting warm. Oh, okay, 86, 90, and 90 and 89. 86, 85, okay, so we are hovering around that 90 mark. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, this is getting hot. Oh, please don't die. I don't want it to die. Because the problem with buying this CPU again is that I can't unless I buy it from scalpers. So an $800 CPU becomes an $1,100 CPU that I've killed. 93.3, that's actually high. 91.3 on the others. So we're like two degrees C on both CCX over the max thermal limit. There we go. We are under base clock. We actually made it. Base clock isn't broken for AMD. That is a good thing. I wonder if that was just OCCT then. At this point, this is the definition of thermal throttling, is it's going below base because its temperatures are too high. OCCT, I don't know, it's just it's something about that workload. It just never took it below base. One last thing that I want to test is not emails. Do you want to like piss off? Ida 64. So don't need to test anything other than that. So here we go. Oh, oh, that's not a good sign. That was almost immediate. Hang on. I am completely locked up. Oh, how are we looking? Okay, cool, I did 64, nice. All right, we are pinned at 100%. That is base. Okay, that is good. But what are our temperatures looking like? All right, 90 degrees C and CCX2 is 90 degrees C. Okay, so we are at thermal limit, but it hasn't died and that's the important thing. So let's quickly recap what has happened here and what the results of our tests have been. Okay, so comparing to our NHU12S, the Intel SOC cooler managed to keep the 5950X 47.2 degrees C idle. And in our first run of OCCT, the one that overheated after six minutes, our average temperature was 88.4 degrees C, but our clocks were super high. It was over 600 megahertz higher than base clock. This alone was alarming, but when you add in the fact that our max CPU temperature was 91.5 degrees C, that's one and a half degrees higher than our max limit, and our minimum clock was more than 400 megahertz higher than our base clock, things were starting to look a little bit troublesome. But then after OCCT crashing because of too much heat, we then tested with IDA64 and Intel burn test and actually saw more normal results, seeing the CPU throttle down as it should to try and save itself. It got as low as 2.9 gigahertz. So then the question is, why not with OCCT? Maybe it is just that much of a brutal benchmark. But also bear in mind that we are pushing the CPU way out of spec and OCCT did actually stop the benchmark before anything bad could happen. So that is a good thing. But let me know in the comments below, what are your thoughts with OCCT? Do you think it should have behaved differently? Do you know why it behaved the way that it did? Let me know in the comments below. Also, while you're down there in the comments section, let me know if you want to see this topic go in a different direction, what you would like to see. A couple of people have said an AMD stock caller on an Intel chip. I think we can probably get that working. Who knows? But leads me on to, if you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Turn on notifications, make sure you don't miss upcoming TechLens videos. Otherwise guys, a like is always appreciated. I'll see you in the next one.